So I wasn't sure exactly uh, how I wanted to, sorry about the screen going white, there's nonsense going on on my end, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to make this video because it's the start of a new series and I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. But the core idea is I'm going to interview a bunch of different players. I have a set list of questions and then I'm just going to, we're going to read their answers, stuff about how they play, um, how they think about the game. And then in the next video, I'm going to show and talk about some games of theirs and go through what I think makes them interesting as a player and ways they view the game that I find interesting and compelling. I will probably also, as I read their answers, respond a little to them or talk about if that accords with what I think of their play as well. But I think I'll do more of that in the next video. So the background is just going to be watching the uh, the first game of the Vialva Turds match for the SE Carver Finals, because that was the best video I have of Vialva. In the next video, we'll be looking at his games, and I'll be looking at that with my normal kind of ugly interface so that we can look at different lines and ideas. Um, so the first question, how would you describe your triple tribe player style? I like to think of myself as a player with a tricky and unexpected style involving mainly setups. I don't mind taking a risky position in order to achieve this, though if I have a safe option instead, I'd rather take it. I guess it falls into the aggressive category, but I try to avoid flipping a starter if the remaining position is not 100% safe. Uh, that ends his answer. Yeah, I think Vialva is quite a tricky player, and one of the things I really want to highlight in the next video is how frequently he meets a starter by playing next to it with a high value. So say here we have a starter in three and he's not gonna do this here, but how often he'll play a move next to it with a high value facing either one or five. And with the intention of if you retake or surround your starter, so here say he played in two and you go in six, he way more often than I think any other good player will have gone in two with the intention of going in five after with the card in two being safe to one. And I think he's really good at seeing these kind of half safeties where he knows he'll have time to block the side he needs to block because you'll be busy locking in some card or doing something else. And I think this is a very specific style. Like he really needs to have figured it out for it to work. It I don't think is so easy to do on general principles but manages to make moves like that work. And I think this is very aggressive. It's kind of forcing immediate action and doing so in an unexpected and complex way. So I like his description of his play and I hope I do a good job picking games that can um, celebrate that. Uh, who is your most interesting opponent? Given my play style and my experience, I have to say my most interesting matches are against Elial. It's been a while, but I remember him as the kind of player that gave me the opportunities to develop mine. Uh, specifically develop his style. And yeah, uh, Delial is a very interesting opponent, and I'm definitely going to show at least one game between Delial and Vialva in the next video, because I think they play really good games. Who is your toughest opponent? Defensive opponents are the one whom with I struggle with the most. Among those, I'd like to mention Chickeny and Midas. At least against me, they play with a unique defensive style that merges with creativity, and it's hard for me to deal with. What formation or move type do you like more than other players do? This can be for either open or closed, or answer for both. I find every open game very unique, so it depends on the hands. Can't give a generic answer. It's a completely different story for closed, though. I try to lock opponents into Q, Z, or T formations, and it's variance if I have first turn, and avoid it if I have second. Yeah, I think... Um, I think the formations end up being what good players tend to get in first turn and closed. I do admittedly play for them. I'm curious, maybe I should have asked a follow-up question, or maybe he'll respond in the comments or something. I'm curious if, um, to avoid the QZ or T on second turn, what you aim for, right? Because one way to avoid those is the X formation. Um, and a lot of good players, I think, avoid the X formation. I personally have been having a lot of success recently allowing the X formation on second turn. So I often have felt coldly towards it, but recently have felt really warm towards it. And I wonder if that's where he's headed or a different way of avoiding it. What formation or move type do you like less than other players do? I don't like being too aggressive. I often think there's something fishy going on if the opponent leaves a safe side and a starter, though I can usually manage if there's been a mistake or a trap. 
and Q, D, T, and Z and close the second move. Please don't. So definitely entering the Q, T, and Z stuff less commonly. So, you know, I wonder how he's reliably avoiding said formations. So this might mean out of the J if there are cards in, say, uh, 2, 5, and 7, if he's more likely than most players to go in 1 or 4, because that's going to avoid one of the big formations. Or if there's the slash, 1, 5, 9, if he's likely to go in 3 or 7 and head towards an X. I wonder if that's the case. I'm not sure. Um, favorite way to meet a corner starter, a side starter, a center starter? That depends on a lot of factors. I'll just assume it's a safe corner and there can't even be a setup made in a diagonal spot. For corner, going for the opposite corner or opposite side, with a side starter, I think I'm most comfortable in five, and center starter, that's just evil. I wouldn't know what to do. The most interesting part here for me is meeting a side starter with five, because that's never been really in my repertoire. It's not a move I look for. And I'm curious what players who do look for it, and lots of really good players do. This is not just Vialva. Um, seen great Sephiroth meets a bunch of sides in five and some other really good players. Um, I'm curious what they look for, because I don't sort of have that concept in my head, and I'm sure I've played it a few times, but without, um, or probably because I felt necessitated by various factors, but not something to seek out, or not to find reasons to play. It was more that every other move didn't make sense to me. Do you have a preferred starter type? Does that change between random and hand games? Does it change between open and closed? If there's a safe option, I'd like to go there, but I also like to, pre to prevent further safe positions from my opponent, which can usually be done with a starter in five. I don't think it does, meaning I don't think it does vary between open and closed. As for closed, I usually try to make a starter I can safely flip back via plus wall or safe wall, which definitely implies he's usually not doing center starters in closed, which is interesting. I, I personally uh, tend to do center starters in closed with combo on, um, but there are lots of players who don't. And it is interesting to me to see the divide between people who like corners or corners and sides, people who like center starters, people who like are between center and sides, uh, center and corner starters, which is where I am, though I lean a bit more towards center, where someone like Turds, I think, is more balanced between the two. Um, so Vialva pretty clearly seems like someone who is not looking for center starters in closed. Interestingly, in the game you can see here, his hand is built around getting 4 6 6 6 and 5. That is, of course, for open, and that is because his hand is really nicely designed to play off it, and in this position, Turds was in a ton of trouble. Uh, what is your proudest triple triad moment? Regarding official tournaments, probably SE Carver finals, though the site was already in its final moments and there weren't many players. That's my biggest achievement, but I think I had a better run in SE Rhinoa 11, defeating Yojimbo, reaching the semis with Midas. Uh, let's look up the run, because I don't have that. Rhinoa 11. We got Vialva and Midas. Um, in the first round, they take out Akiyama and Genova, so that's a really strong team. In the second round, they take out Diacon and Titan Foyer, so we're knocking out winners right and left. In the third round, they take out Raceland, Majir, and Yojimbo, a double winner team. And then in the semifinals, they lose to Sir Smoke and Nightwish, and Nightwish goes on to win the tournament. Yeah, that's a great run. Uh, really nice. Uh, I think I had a better run on Rhinoa 11, defeating Yojimbo and reaching semis with Midas. As for unofficial tournaments, I had an incredibly good run on the 20, on 2012 GB, losing only three games and all of them were closed. I'd also like to mention hosting SE Chaos, which at the moment I'm pretty sure is the only player tournament that has icons as rewards. I believe that is true. Uh, should Deli all be banned? Yes or absolutely? He disrespectfully replies, please don't. This is not the answer I'm looking for. Should Elemental be abolished? Yes or immediately? It makes no rules games more fun, so yeah, abolish it. I really like this answer. Uh, you know, it does help no rules games, but we don't want to help no rules games. We want to stomp them out, so let's get rid of it. What clans will always have a place in your heart? I learned a lot from Brotherhood of Spe Seed, and especially from Yojimbo. Only being asked to join was a huge pride. I was considered average, and I know Brotherhood of Seed reaches for top players. So I felt honored, and I think I really improved since then. Player you think is most underrated? 
I don't think underrated is the right word, because he's always been respected, especially in closed, winning best closed player several years in a row back then, but I always felt Amo has a lot of unseen potential as an open player. I feel you've been on the same position too long, so, uh, in the video, so we're gonna skip ahead a little, uh, move, make sure a move gets actually played while I, while I record, because we're gonna be done soon. Uh, who are your top three to five picks for greatest of all time? He replies specifically in this order. Yojimbo, Delial was up. I think these are three of the classic uh, five choices. I'm really hoping someone gives me an answer on this that's not one of the five I made a case for, uh, but I think Yojimbo as his pick is a very good pick. When did you start playing and what was your favorite era? I made my first account in 2004, but I never really got into it until 2010. Those first two years were fun, but I mainly played level 1 through 4 games, which was common among starting players until you could gather a decent amount of cards to play random. I started playing mainly open random games from 2012 ahead, and that changed my gameplay completely. Most of them were against Yojimbo, who then asked me to join boss, and we would just spam open random games for hours. That was the most fun, probably around 2013 to 15. Um, I started a little earlier and never made an account in 04, I didn't know it existed. But I kind of feel I had a similarish trajectory of, you know, starting off, and for some amount of time, for me it wasn't two years, but for some amount of time, you know, you're playing the level four games, and then at some point making the jump to mostly playing open randoms, I think is a, is a fun trajectory and classic for really good players. Favorite rule set or sets? I like stipulations, especially the ones that limit certain combinations or numbers, as well as the cards per level. I usually prefer playing from levels 5 to 10, 1 and 2 being the most annoying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stand here and say level 2 is the worst triple triad level. And Vialva might join me in that. I think Turds might be on board with that too. I think Koner would not. I think Koner is the one really excellent level 2 stan who just really enjoys it and does super well with it. Have you met any other TT players in person? Well, I live in Argentina, so no, that's really far away from everything else. There's been a few other South American players, but most people I talk to are from England, Germany, Czech, USA, and Canada. TT seems to be pretty popular there. Yeah, I would add Poland into that, though the Polish players tend not to be super talkative in the main chats, but that's the other country I think of. And finally, what is your biggest weakness as a player? You can evade the question if you think it is targetable. I like building and trying new hands a lot, so I make way too much of them, and then I keep changing them instead of keeping the patterns that gave me good results. I think this makes me kind of inconsistent. Yeah, actually, the uh, the games I have up are a really good example for that, because in this first game, he plays incredibly well. Uh, the position you can see is very tough for blue to save. Uh, turns, turds ends up finding the only saving move with 5, 8, 7, 6, and 1, which looks like it walks into this huge plus and four, but he has the, the same wall to combo back at the end, and it turns out favorably for Turds, and just barely manages to save the game here. Really nice find. I thought he was lost. You can look back at my commentary, the, uh, the video I took this from. I thought it was all over, but, but Turds does manage to save the game in really nice style, but Vialva puts a ton of pressure on and after the game, Vialva switches hands. He basically rotates the hand sideways. And the game after that, he switches to a new hand built on sevens. And the game after that, he switches to another uh, version of the seven-based hand, rather than this one, which is based on sixes. And I think every game sort of went better for turds. And that might have been him figuring things out and improving. But I think the first hand was the, was the hand that lined up best. And then the second hand lined up slightly worse. And then the seven based hands, uh, Turds' hand played a little better against. And so he sort of, by having all these hands built, and I think all of them were creative ideas, but by hopping from one to the next, I think it hurt him in this match. Though also the fact that he got second turn in every game was clearly a disadvantage, and Turds also played great. But it did feel to me like the hand swapping wasn't, you know, he found an advantage in game one and he jumped to something else and that seemed pretty balanced, and he jumped to something else, and that seemed fairly balanced, and he jumped to something new again, and I think that ended up biting him here. So some really interesting answers. Um, I'm not quite sure how I should publish this. I never, like, put up the answers written, so I could uh, put that there so we can have a place where you can compare one person's answers to another on each question. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that, or what I'm going to do for that, uh, 
but hopefully this was a decent thing to have in the background. Admittedly, not much action happened because seven minute games are slow. So maybe I'll find better ways to do the videos in the future. But in the next video, we're going to dive in and look at some of Yalva's play. And I think we won't look at this game because there's already um, me doing live commentary for it and me talking about the Carver match. But I have a bunch of random games he's played, some with some commentary from him, some where I'll be doing the commentary, where I either think he's playing really nicely and they're just really examples of him playing great games, or they're nice examples, and this can be both, of course, as well, uh, examples of him doing things I think most players don't look to do. And I think one thing about Triple Triad is there's a ton of scope for creativity. I think there are kind of better and worse moves. You know, some moves obviously lose, but usually after, say, someone else goes first, you have 40 possible moves. And usually most of them with perfect play will lead to ties, right? Um, some, the path to a tie is easier. Some you put pressure on the opponent, some you don't. But most moves will end up leading to a tie if you play well from there, which leaves a ton of room to find different ways to try to discombobulate or make little inconveniences for your opponent. And there are kind of standard ways to do so and less standard ways to do so. And as I talked about before, I think Vialva finds some move types that are pretty different from what most people play, and he usually handles them really nicely. So that's going to be fun to explore as well, just to see the different ways he, he plays and views the game. And that's really what I hope to hone in on and uh, show both him at his best, but also him at his finding moves that you or I probably wouldn't find or wouldn't consider and trying to think about what he's doing that other players aren't. So that's where I hope to go with this. This is just the first video of the questionnaire and I hope to do this with a few other players. I have uh, given the questionnaire to a second player and uh, have some games and just doing this and getting answers from different players talking about their play and also doing some deep dives into their games and where they play well and maybe for some, it'll be, um, you know, uh, for someone like Turds, for instance, you know, Turds obviously plays fantastically well. Fialva plays well, too. You know, or someone, you know, there are people who most of their games, they're winning, right? And it might be interesting to look at trying to find where I think the weak spots are. Though, of course, I also kind of don't want to give that away if I do find it, because I would like to exploit them. But finding weak spots um, in, in very good players' games could also be an interesting project that could come from this. But more likely, I'm going to be looking to show the players at their best. And here we can say, Turds, see, Turds has made the saving move. But I think he said afterwards, you know, this is the kind of move he can find in seven minutes, but in shorter time controls. This is a game that Fialvo is just going to win and become a champion. And played some really great games here. And so we'll get into that more. Uh, this video was just the questionnaire. And uh, see you next time.